Hello and welcome to chapter 8 of the Eggplant Performance tutorial series. Uh, so this is part 2 of the generation rules topic and we're going to be talking about verification checks. So the previous chapter was all about parameterization, uh, getting our script set up to be able to use different sets of credentials and now we want to verify that when we do use different credentials the login still works as expected. So switching over to Studio, uh, everything should be as it was before. Uh, we've got our two replace generation rules here. And in order to create a new generation rule, uh, we go into the regenerate process again. There we go. So this is a screen where we can now add a new generation rule. So uh, there's a few different options for the verification rules. Uh, two of them uh, are already uh, part of our default rules, but you can customize them a bit more if you actually set up a, an explicit rule for either verifying the page title or the HTTP response code. Uh, so it's actually this third one that we're interested in, and that is verify, verify contains. Uh, so uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, HTTP responses and looking for some specific string in there and we're going to use that to determine uh, whether or not uh, we're on the page that we're expecting to be on or the virtual user is on the right page. Now the default option here is to look for a fixed value so uh, I could type in whatever string that I be wanting to look for in the response here uh, but in this case uh, we're actually uh, looking for uh, something that's dynamic in nature so we can we can make this quite intelligent actually we can uh, we can have it look for uh, the actual username on the page so if you recall at the Nopcommerce website when you log into it uh, you're uh, you no longer see a login link, it is instead play, uh, replaced with a link uh, to your account information and the link itself uh, is uh, the name of the account that, you're, that you've logged on as. Uh, so we're going to use that as a, as a pretty good way of uh, being able to say, uh, to conclude that the uh, login completed successfully. Uh, so uh, we're going to look at that, uh, look up that value in the data dictionary, exactly the same place that we're getting it from uh, to do the parameterization to actually be able to log in as different users. Uh, so uh, the, they should always match, basically. Uh, pressing next now uh, reveals this screen where we have two uh, empty white uh, boxes where we can put a uh, code that we want to execute uh, depending on the success or failure of this verification check. So uh, if we do find uh, the account name on the page, then we can put some code here, uh, uh, for example, uh, to output information, perhaps. So um, the default is to actually generate a warning message and continue uh, should uh, the text that we're looking for not appear on the page. Uh, so uh, in this case, I think uh, we just want to uh, do nothing and uh, that basically allows you to fully define what, what should happen uh, manually in these two code blocks. So I'm going to uh, show a bit of code here. So it's going to be a mix of our own uh, API as well as standard .NET Framework uh, C# -sharp code. Uh, so uh, a very common one uh, that you'll see uh, quite often, uh, you'll see me use it quite often uh, as well, uh, is write message. So it's a very basic uh, um, API that allows you to write uh, whatever message uh, you like uh, to the virtual user's event log. So you can quickly see uh, or get some kind of feedback from, uh, from this kind of message. Uh, so write message uh, takes a string uh, as its parameter. Uh, there might be a few different overloads for write message, but the most common one is uh, simply just takes a string. So we can start writing out that string here now. Now, so, so this message is going to output uh, if we know that the login was successful. Um, there's something you can do here. Um, uh, we need to uh, basically put this uh, bit of code here in uh, in order to actually be able to print out uh, the username uh, that we're actually logging in as. Uh, so I could just uh, concatenate these strings so that we've got one long string here. Uh, the alternative is to use some um, .NET Framework code. There's a method called string.format uh, which allows you to 
um, put this in, in, in a format which um, allows you to just put all of the parameters at the end of uh, this method rather than uh, concatenating a bunch of stuff together. So uh, it's a bit easier to read, I find, uh, because all of the parameters are towards the end of, of this line of code here. Uh, so that's what that could look like. Uh, now we probably want to do something similar uh, uh, in the code to execute on failure block, uh, but in this case we know that uh, failure to log in is pretty serious. The virtual user is probably not going to be able to do much else beyond uh, beyond that login script, assuming that you need to be logged in in order to do other things in the application. So, uh, so in this case, I'm going to use exit vu. Uh, so that's another uh, of our API methods. And as you might imagine, as soon as the virtual user reaches this line, uh, it will terminate. Um, there is actually a, a, a couple of parameters that we have to add here. One is just going to be a message, so fail to log in as we'll do it in very similar style uh, to the write message. Again, using string.format to, to make this look a bit uh, nicer. Again, we'll want to print out the username. Now, in this case, exit view actually takes two parameters. One is that uh, message, and the other is a Boolean flag. Um, so this flag determines whether or not this exit should be uh, treated as expected or unexpected. So false um, implies that it's an unexpected exit view, and therefore um, it'll lo be logged as such uh, when you then go to look at the results. So that's pretty much it on this screen. Uh, just going to hit next. Now, the default with the verification rule is that it'll apply to uh, all HTTP uh, requests, or more specifically, the responses to these requests. Now, that's actually not what we want. We're not checking whether or not uh, that email address appears on every single HTTP response. Uh, that's more than likely not going to be the case. And so we actually have to tell the engine here which request that uh, this verification check should be applied to. Now, so we'll probably need to have a look at the recording uh, to work out how we can single out that response uh, where we're looking for the email address in the HTTP response. So we know that it's during the submit login. In fact, it's right after we log in. Uh, the first of the two login requests is actually just a redirect uh, that redirects us to uh, this page here. And so page 62, uh, request 62 is actually what brings us back uh, the, the home page uh, where we can see our uh, email address. So it's actually 62 that we want to apply this verification rule to. And so we need to filter down to that particular request. Uh, so one way we can do that is um, we can look at the request headers. Um, I believe the login request here will have a refer value set to slash login. So that's something we can use here. Uh, it's a request header. We've got some defaults already populated in here. Uh, refer is uh, one of them there and uh, the pattern is just going to be slash login. Uh, now it's actually showed up two requests that have that uh, feature. Uh, so let's go back to the recording. Uh, it is also this uh, redirect request. So yeah, there it is. We do also have that refer header there. Uh, but we already know that uh, the uh, post request results in a redirect, uh, so it's going to have a 302 uh, result code, uh, whereas the request we're after will have a 200 response code. So we can add another filter here now that will filter this down further uh, by the 200 response code. So that should jump down to just be request 62, and that's it. That's all we need to do. I'm just going to rename the rule, verify that the login completed successfully, and hit finish. There's our ru rule added. Uh, now we're just going to regenerate the script. All right, all done. Uh, let's have a quick look at uh, the script uh, in the IDE again. Uh, so here's our previous two uh, generation rules uh, parameterizing the username and password. And a bit further down, after we send the request and we've received the response, uh, one of the first things we do then is uh, to ensure, uh, to verify that it contains uh, the username that we're logging in as. So this is all of the generated code from that verification rule. Um, 
if the uh, verify contains returns true, then we'll go into this if statement and execute the write message. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, exit the view on this line. It's not even going to perform these other default verification checks. Uh, it's not even going to end the transaction. And so, you know, this failure will not even show up in the results because it's, it's, uh, it, there was an error that happened during it. Okay, we should just be able to run this as well. We can just hit the start button uh, to see how far this goes. So we've got our web log appearing again, as well as the virtual users event log down here. And we should soon start seeing some data. There we go. All right, we've submitted our login and we've got a little write message that's shown up here. And it says we've successfully logged in as email01 at test.com. It's always worth sanity checking this stuff. We can, uh, we can now uh, take uh, the credentials file and modify it uh, to use the other account that we know also works to log in as. Uh, so just updating uh, the values there. Back into the IDE. We haven't changed the code, so I can just hit start straight away and I should see uh, us logging in as the second user. There we go. We've logged in as a second user as well, uh, so I'm pretty confident now that we're able to use uh, different uh, login credentials and uh, uh, each virtual user. And now that we know it's working with one user, we should be able to run this with two virtual users and have each one use its own set of credentials to log in. So that's uh, what we'll have a look at in the next chapter. So we'll see you again soon.